I've been going on these dates. I went on this really weird date. Like I was totally, I don't know if the girl was just, I guess she was just out of my league or something, but I was just so unconfident. <laughs> I w and it wasn't, and I even like purposely didn't jerk off, you know, to save up that <laughs> testosterone and I didn't jerk off for like three days and then the date, we went on the date because, and she's gorgeous. I'm on this new app, Raya, it's like exclusive, everyone on it is like famous. I've like seen actresses on there and everyone's like a model. But everyone's also like, like hipster and statusy as fuck. Like everyone thinks they're so fucking cool. <laughs> everyone's playing Tame Impala for their song. God, is there such thing as a Tame Impala fan that doesn't think they're so fucking cool themselves? God, it's like the most iconic hipster band. They're the new shins. Um. Anyway, yeah. Davy Wayne's Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. She comes in. I'd already had a vodka Red Bull. She comes in, we hug. <laughs> sit down. And I'm just like, for some reason, I might, I don't know, my equilibrium is off and I'm, I'm like looking around and she's like intimidating as all hell for some reason. Like she's, she sits down and she just looks at me. She's just like, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like total, uh, I don't know. I could almost like tell. She didn't like me. <laughs> like she, like, and this is. I thought, like, you know, I felt like I was 19 again, going on like a first date. It was so weird. I was like, I was like, hi, what's up? Hi. Like, being all small talky and shit. Like, and there's just like no connection. And she's like, she's just staring at me, and she's like. All right, like she was definitely sizing me up, and I was like impressing her. And it's usually, it's usually fucking the other way around, and I just wasn't used to that. <laughs> the paradigm was so fucking weird. Like you're either in your, in her frame, or she's in your frame. And there's always a frame. It's weird. I think I read that in that in that book. But anyway, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't that bad. We talked and everything it was fine. But then she drove me home, and she only had like one drink, and I was like, "Yeah, let's hang out later. Great." And then a couple days later, hey, do you want? We hanging out tonight? And she's like, hi, it was really great meeting you. I just didn't feel a strong connection. I've been led on before and I don't want to do that to you. Hope you get it. <laughs> I, I almost, I guess it's cool that she gave me closure, but I almost wish she didn't send anything back. Like, I wish she just ghosted me because I feel like that would have been less painful. Oh, dating. Chatting with us are doing great. That's really exciting. Man. I'm going to be in New York from the 4th to the 16th. Going to be in Boulder. From the 28th or the 30th, at least. 
with Chad, and maybe film their visiting friends. <laughs> um, been reading a book, reading a few books, just I guess self-help books. Uh, both really good. Um, how Not to Die by Michael Greger. That's all about how we all pretty much already have heart disease <laughs> and we need to reverse it by eating plants. And then, if, if you're American anyway, or Western. And then, uh, Cupid's Poison Arrow. And that's all about sexual transmutation and caressa sex and not ejaculating. <laughs> And no fat. It's not. It never says no fat, but it talks a lot about um, it's written by a woman, a woman, and she actually thinks that orgasming, <laughs> orgasming, is causing deterioration in relationships, and goes into the scientific stuff of it, and that actually like climaxing in sex is should only be for procreation and then normal sex should you should be no jack no orgasms and it's just the Kareza tantric oh yeah and I, I texted back that girl no I said no worries or I said okay I said thanks not get it thanks <laughs> Hell. Had a lot of caffeine. Something that is eerie, though, is... Like gentlemen, in the last week or so, three girls that don't know each other texted me that I, that I haven't talked to in months. Has that ever happened to you guys? Is that happening now? Is it some kind of astrological thing? Are all the girls' ovulation cycles linked up in the world? Alright, my bitch ass pussy goats, please curb stomp the fuck out of that like button. Okay, my titty goats, please smack around that like button and motorboat it. <laughs> Alright. What's up, my goats? It's not like you, I'm sorry. Now I'm on a different story. Uh, da, da. Oh, now I'm in a hole breaking, and I've been wrong. I've been down. I'm put a bit of how to hold. Do tell me <laughs> when you don't know the words. <laughs> hey, Benny. So American Animals yesterday. New favorite movie this year next to a quiet place and it's funny the first half i was like i was like this is like too sensational and shitty and a little overhyped and i went in expecting it to be a really good movie but then the second half kind of pulled its own and made up for the first like the second half is amazing and i almost cried <laughs> A movie's great. I judge a movie on if I laugh and if I cry and if it moves me. And A Quiet Place and American Animals this year should move you if you're me. <laughs> oh, I got, got some fan mail. Oliver Jerkin, San Antonio. Dear Andrew, I'm really into your series chatting with. It gets me in the best possible way. Like so many folks in the past two years, I've felt pretty delusioned with humanity. I've felt overwhelmed by the frothing de divisiveness that seems to worm its way into every corner of our lives. 
I felt drained by the constant need to check, check, check news outlets and social media going so far as to make reading my morning damage report the first thing I do before I even go out, get out of bed. Not the healthiest habit, if I'm honest, but that's where I'm, I'm at many days. In a world that sometimes feels like it's spinning out of control, shows like your, shows like yours really slow me down and ground me in the reality that behind usernames and avatars are actual human people and that real human conversations are still possible. That it's possible to still connect with people. Your interview style can only be described by a word I've spent the past few minutes reaching for but haven't managed to catch. Real comes to mind, but that seems a little simplistic. Human, maybe, but that's cliche. Your format is unique, certainly, and desperately needed in times like these. The series that you've created hits me especially hard, maybe, because you are so lacking in judgment when you interview your guests. So often, in both the independent media and the mainstream, the person asking the questions is pretty obviously trying to slant the guest answers in one direction or another, usually to fit some narrative or agenda. You don't do that, and it's ridiculously refreshing. I love getting an insight into people who are different from myself without feeling pressured to feel one way or another about them by how the interview is framed. As a viewer, I get the chance to learn something about a person who is portrayed as a human being and who is just being themselves and relating their experiences. I can't emphasize how spectacular that is. Seriously, dude. Thank you for what you do. Your serious, your series is genius in the way that simple machines are genius. It's needed, uncomplicated, and understated. Bravo. Very best, Oliver. P.S. Not for nothing, but if you ever wanted to have a transgender guy on your show for a chat, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Hmm. Huh. Great. I have a transgender woman <laughs> that should be up this Wednesday. So great, Oliver. Yeah, I'll I'll email you. That's such a nice letter. Thank you. <laughs> My ego is big enough, though. Um, thanks, man. Yeah, I want. I don't try so much to debate the guests. I want to, um, I want it to be more observational. And I, yeah, I don't want to necessarily take a stance. I do, at the same time, I do want to get better at debate and, and playing devil's advocate, etc. For, for either side of whatever issue we're talking about, the topic. But for the most part, I just let my curiosity do all the work. Thank you so much, though. Yeah, I'll email you. I. Transgender guy, I'm assuming you're, and since your name's Oliver, you used to be a woman, so that's perfect. That would, that would, that would be, well, I guess, chatting with a transgender woman, and then I would do chatting with a transgender guy, would be the other one. Yeah, there's like sequels to, to, you know, like the Muslim would be chatting with a radical Muslim, and then chatting with a radical feminist, which would be kind of scary. Here's another letter. Hayden, girl, oh, it's a graduation. Hey, Andrew, sorry this girly envelope is the only thing I had. I guess it's a card, not an envelope. Whoops. Anyway, just wanted to say that you, to say thank you for entertaining me through my high school career. Keep up the chatting withs and the vlogs. Glad to see you getting out of the prank scene. If you'd like to congratulate me or whatever, my Instagram is heshbones or my phone number is... Thanks, goat. By the way, I'll make sure to donkey kick the shit out of that like button. <laughs> Hayden. Hey. Hayden. You sent me a graduation letter. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Your love and support did not go unnoticed. After high school, I'm going to serve a two-year mission in... Oh, for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. If you'd like to contact me, feel free to do so. I would love to hear from you. Sweet. Let's see. You're from Cali? <laughs> Um, potatoes. I can bake potatoes now. Um, the show Entourage is like the opposite of The Office in that it's not awkward at all. Like, every line is like just bang, 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 like smooth conversations. Especially Ari Gold. Even though she's the rich one. 
I'm on the uh, last season, about five episodes to go. This is the second time I've watched the whole thing through. I watched it all through in like 2013 or something for the first time and then this is my second time. The last three seasons are definitely the best. It gets better, just like Breaking Bad. You gotta give it a shot. Yeah, Breaking Bad, like, I almost wish, like, the second season didn't exist. It, like, doesn't get good till season three. I banged this chick last week. <laughs> I, I wish I could see your guys' reaction to that. I'm, like, looking at myself here. I'm just talking to a camera here, but... It's like a delayed response, I guess. I'll read the comments. I don't really talk like that. Or right, Gold talks like that. <laughs> it's so funny. The lines, man. It's so weird to watch the interviews of Jeremy Piven. He's so different, in my opinion. He's like so much more sensitive in real life. Like he's like an actor. <laughs> or he's like more soft spoken. I, I wouldn't, I don't know about sensitive, but. Chilling in my boxers. Yeah, I, I, I stopped wearing boxers when I, like at 16 years old or something and like wear briefs, but then, <laughs> On a whim, when I filmed something with Chad like a year ago, we bought all these clothes for this thing. These and boxers were one of them to put because we were like gonna sag our these sweat pants or something. And I returned most of them, but you can't return boxers, so I ended up ret keeping these and I actually wear them. Because they're, they actually fit me pretty well. And they're not better or worse, they're just different than briefs. <laughs> oh, vlogging. It's like this constant battle between good and evil. Evil being vlogging, it's like this mediocrity, pettiness, create, creatively anyway, you know, it's all fairy dust, fluff, I'm not really accomplishing anything, it's busy work, and then good is, uh, I guess not, is focusing on bigger projects and progressing and <laughs> um, putting myself on the line and taking risks.